is Chicago's very own WGN Morning News at 4. Breaking overnight, a suspicious fatal fire in the suburbs. We're live with details. A big day in Washington, D.C., where former FBI Director James Comey will testify about his private conversations with President Trump before he was fired. And Illinois is among several states looking into whether Russia hacked into its elections. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tamon Bradley. And I'm Courtney Hall. Thanks so much for joining us on the WGN Morning News at 4 a.m. Meteorologist Morgan Kochmeyer has a check of the weather. Good morning, hey, Morgan. Morgan. Good morning, you guys. We've got 50s this morning. We are into near 80 today for some of us. 70s and 80s, depending on where you live. 55 degrees though this morning. If you're at O'Hare, most of us sitting in those 50s. Bartlett, Joliet, Michigan City, and Waukegan dropping into the middle and upper 40s. So again, most of us a little bit closer to that 50 mark as we've got a most clear sky. Lots of sunshine again today. As we get into your late afternoon and especially your evening, some of those clouds that are pretty far off to our northwest right now start to sink a little further southeast and we'll likely see some increasing cloud cover. So headed to the Cubs game, you've got a few more clouds than what you'll see through your morning hours. This future outlook will show you that. Two o'clock, we're still mostly sunny. Notice we've worked in a southwest wind, but as we get closer to four, five, six, we've got a few more clouds rolling in from the northwest. And then we see a couple scattered showers, very widely scattered showers possible overnight tonight and same story tomorrow. We should still see some sunshine tomorrow, but on and off clouds and hit or miss showers and storms expected here and there for your Friday, though it's all done by the time we get into your Saturday. That's when hot and humid weather arrives today, mid 70s by your late morning, touching the low 80s today, low 70s along the lake. And then we see hot and humid weather take over this weekend, expecting upper 80s and humidity and even hotter on Saturday or on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. More on that is up in just a bit. Sarah, over to you. All right, good morning there. We do have uh, some overnight road work to watch out for. Southbound Tri-State, 82nd to 95th. Right lane blocked. It's going to be closed until 9 o'clock here this morning. Also want to give you a heads up to a crash we had overnight here. Eight people have been uh, sent to the hospital following two-vehicle accident on Lakeshore Drive. It happened shortly after 11 last night in the 700 block of South Lakeshore Drive. Four children and four adults were injured. Police are investigating the cause of that crash. Guys. We begin with some breaking news. A suspicious fire killed a man and sent another person to the hospital. Nancy Liu is live at the scene near 90th and Cicero in Oak Lawn with more. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Taman and Courtney. The medical examiner's office confirms one fatality from this fire at around 1.45 this morning. It was in a mobile home park behind me. Uh, the victim is said to be a middle-aged man who was inside that white trailer. Another man is described to be in grave condition. Cell phone video captured as firefighters arrived show one trailer fully engulfed and another also on fire in the mobile home park on South Cicero at 90th. One man was found right outside the fully engulfed trailer and he was rushed to Christ Hospital and there was no saving the other man who was inside the mobile home. Witnesses knew the outcome would be tragic. I see somebody get pulled out from the house and you know, it kind of did look like he was very injured. Yeah, and then like about 20 minutes later, I seen them pull out somebody else, and, you know, I think he just passed out. You know, he was all covered. According to one neighbor, there was a birthday celebration last night in the trailer where the man was found dead. The cause of the fire may be suspicious. The state fire marshal has been called in to investigate. And back here live, the investigators are on the scene. They are taking pictures uh, of the mobile home park. They have since reopened Cicero to traffic, but this investigation is just getting underway. Again, one man confirmed dead. Another said to be gravely injured. That is the latest live from Oak Lawn, Nancy Liu, WGN News. Nancy, thanks very much. And we finally get to hear from James Comey himself for the first time since the president fired him. Now, we already know that Comey will say that President Trump asked for his loyalty. Reed Binion has more. Well, I think it's very close to obstruction of justice. Congresswoman Jackie Speier, one of several Democrats reacting strongly to the release of fired FBI Director James Comey's prepared comments, ahead of what promises to be a dramatic day of testimony by Comey on Capitol Hill. Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein slamming the way Comey says Trump behaved in their meetings. A president 
who knows no limits in terms of a proper relationship. The White House characterizing Comey's prepared remarks as a vindication for the president, focusing on Comey's acknowledgement of Trump's claim that he told the president he wasn't personally under investigation. Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham, trying to cast Comey's testimony as a positive. All in all, it's a pretty good day for President Trump. If I believe every word of, of what Comey said, it doesn't rise to the level of obstruction of justice. Reaction to Comey's prepared remarks came the same day that Democrats expressed frustration over a lack of candor from intelligence chiefs testifying in the Senate. To the best of my recollection, I have never been directed to do anything I believe to be illegal, immoral, unethical, or inappropriate. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats and NSA Director Mike Rogers refusing to offer specifics about their private conversations with President Trump. After a Washington Post report that Trump asked Coats to get Comey to dial back the focus on former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Why are you not answering because our questions? I feel questions? it is inappropriate. What is the legal basis for your refusal to testify to this committee? I'm not sure I have a legal basis. Reed Binion, WGN News. And WGN will carry the Comey hearing today across all of our platforms. It's scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. You can always get the latest developments on our website, WGNTV.com, and our free mobile news app. Illinois is among eight states investigating whether Russia hacked into its elections. A leaked report by the National Security Agency reveals how Russian military intelligence infiltrated the company that made the election software used in those states. The report says nothing about votes being affected. Only one Illinois county used that software. Homeland Security says it believes Russia targeted voter registration systems, too, and Illinois was the worst hit state. But there were no signs of anything being changed. Police are investigating the death of a newborn baby found inside of a shed in South Suburban Dalton. Police say the homeowner noticed a foul odor coming from the shed on 157th and Drexel. She found a garbage bag and opened it. In fact, she discovered that it was the decomposing body of what appeared to be an infant. We're heartbroken when something like this happens because the children, they're, they're not our future, they are today. And this child should have had a chance. Police say the body may have been there for as long as a week. The infant's age and gender have not yet been determined. An autopsy will be done to determine the cause of death, and DNA samples will be used to try to track down the parents. No one has been identified as a suspect. A grandmother will spend the rest of her life in prison for the torture and murder of her 8-year-old granddaughter. A judge handed down the sentence for Helen Ford, calling this a heinous act. The girl, Giselle Ford, was found strangled and badly beaten inside of an apartment in the South Austin neighborhood in the summer of 2013. Investigators say she was tied to a bed, going for days without food or water, and she was beaten for trying to drink water from a toilet. She kept a journal detailing the abuse. Two teenagers and a 12-year-old boy appeared in court charged with shooting at Chicago police officers. A judge ordered them to remain in custody until their next court appearance. Police say the suspects fired from a car that was stolen during a carjacking in Forest Park. This is one of four times Chicago officers have been shot at since last Friday. Let's face it, if these individuals that shoot at police officers, they'll shoot at anybody, you know. And so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we have to do a better job of holding these repeat gun offenders and gun offenders uh, accountable for what they do. Two men were badly hurt Tuesday night after they shot at officers in the 2900 block of North Newland. Police fired back, hitting one man. The other was injured when they crashed their car. Chicago South Side is about to get its first trauma center in 26 years. The University of Chicago's expanded emergency department is now scheduled to open January 8th. It'll be 76% larger than the current emergency room. Then, next May 1st, the hospital's new trauma center will open. Doctors will be able to treat gunshot victims, car crash victims, and other people with life-threatening medical emergencies. The South Side's last trauma center at the old Michael Reese Hospital closed in 1991. A week after President Trump pulled out of the Paris climate, agreement, Mayor Emanuel is renewing Chicago's commitment to the PAC. He signed an executive order yesterday adopting the Paris Agreement's environmental guidelines. The order commits the city to significantly reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 2025.
Here's the latest on the Illinois budget battle. A federal judge in Chicago has ordered the state to negotiate payments due to Medicaid recipients. Now, right now, the state has $2 billion in unpaid Medicaid bills. The judge could have ordered them to be paid in full, but instead, she said the payment should be enough to ensure critical medical care can continue. Comptroller Susanna Mendoza says she will comply, but she says the real solution is to pass a budget. Tweets from President Trump could lead to free drinks. A bar in Washington, D.C. is offering a round of free drinks every time the president tweets about former FBI Director James Comey. The tweets have to happen during Comey's testimony today. That starts at 9 this morning. All right, D.C.'s gearing up for this. They're ready to go. It's going to be hard to top yesterday, Morgan, when you when you talk about today's weather. I know, I know. It's actually, it is a little bit better. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay. we've got 80s today, and those lakeside temperatures warm up a little bit, too. So all of us getting into at least more summer-like weather. This morning, low 60s at the Cubby Bear Soldier Field in British School of Chicago. Upper 50s in Lombard, and a couple of cooler spots include Wilmette, Sauk Village, Island Lake, and Morton Grove. Just shy of 50 degrees this morning. Again, most of us deal Dealing with 50s and near 60 this morning. Mostly clear sky and high pressure still keeping that sunshine in play here. Though clouds off to our northwest slowly sink further southeast. So some cloud cover by your late afternoon, primarily into your evening hours. Overall still warming up. Low 80s expected today with low 70s along the lake. Keeping on climbing into the 90s, especially by your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Hot and humid weather. A more detailed forecast coming up in just a bit. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. All right, coming up, the mother of one of the London attackers is speaking out. She explains the phone call she got from her son before the attack. Plus, a new study says the kind of milk your child drinks can affect their health. And later on in sports, how the Cavs fared on their home court against Golden State in Game 3 of the NBA Finals. Stay with us.